so guys time series basically have two types the first one is univariate and the other one is multivariate so let's understand what is a univariate time series as you can see on the background for around five years how the stocks has fluctuated you got this data on your hand so now i will ask you how the stocks will follow the trend or the path for next six months so this type of problem where I have given only the data of target variable. So I have not given you any weather data, anything else like market trends and anything which are going, which will have impact on this stock price. I have, I have not given that type of data to you. I have only given the five years data of that stock and I am asking you to predict six months ahead. So this type of time series called the univariate time series and we will apply univariate analysis on top of this. So let's understand what is multivariate. So in multivariate analysis, you will have some independent variables available with you. Like the problem statement will be, I will, I am asking you to forecast again for the six month, but add it to the stock six years data or five years data. I'm giving you, so how the market trends were there, how was the currency rates were there, how were the petroleum price were there or other commodities price are there and uh, how was the weather conditions so whichever variable can affect your stock price I'm, i've given you all those data so now you have some independent variables and you have you need to forecast your target or your stock price which is a dependent variable so to so those who are not clear with dependent and independent variable i'll just make a definition so dependent is your y variable which you have to predict and independent are all these features or x variables so now how this is different from a normal classification or regression type of problem so guys this is different from your classification or uh, normal regression type of problem because you have one added thing over here you have time impact so you know that how the series fluctuates with time so you need to take into consideration this time impact and forecast for for given time this makes this problem in completely different than a regular regression or regular classification type of problems so how to deal with this problem first we will understand the traditional way of treating these type of problems so that in traditional way there comes some models like ar models your ma models ar is auto regressive I will clear all these terms uh, going forward. MA is moving average and ARIMA, which is a combination of both two models. Then we have higher level models like VAR models. Then Facebook have also provided their own model named as profit. So in further coming videos, if I will, uh, if you want to know more about these models, just write things in the comments so that I can uh, take the topics from there and create a new videos on top of them. So let's understand steps involved in univariate time series analysis. So you will have a time series given to you that I already to told earlier that a stock data for five years is given to you. Now you need to find out the next six months. So the first step is to plot that data and see how the data is looking like. So as on the background, I have shown you two, three types of time series and these all these time series have something common. So if you see that this stocks is going upwards, so there is some trend component involved in that. And also there is some seasonality like in February or in March, you are always seeing a jump in the time series and uh, or in the December or in the November, you are seeing a dip in the time series. So these are called the seasonal component or the seasonality and the upward and downwards are uh, called the trends or uh, the monotonic trends we can say so we have two components over here first is trend second is seasonality so before using any traditional model you need to remove these two things from your data why we need to remove these two things because once you will remove trend and seasonality from your time series you will be remaining with a stationary series so what is stationary series? So stationary series is a series from which you won't see any variation in the variance. So what I mean to say over here that in February, if some variance have some limit of the time series, it is not going to explode in time it, at the time of March. It will remain within some limit. So that type of time series can easily be predicted or can easily be fed it into your, your ARIMA or 
your uh, auto war type of models so first you have to you have to make your siege stationary by applying these two things first you need to remove your trend and the second thing you need to remove your seasonality now how to remove these two things so guys we have something called as differencing so i will show you one series what happens once you will different that series so let's see on the background you are seeing a series of numbers and you, you can see that these numbers are increasing uh, these numbers are increasing with time now i am i am subtracting every single number with the with the with with its previous number so this is something called as differencing in first order so you are already differencing your time series with the previous time stamp value so you can see that 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 it's a it's an increasing type of series now i have subtracted one element previous from every single term so now the series is looking like 1 then 1 then 1 then 1 now you can see it's a straight line so there is there is nothing in this time series so there, there was only this singular trend that you got out of it so now we understood why i am removing this trend thing i can add i can just use this trend at the end i already know that after removing this trend i am i am having a straight line okay so if i want to predict any anything which is like coming a fifth term after that i will just put that trend of to on top of the last term and predict my future so it's become pretty easy once you will remove the trend because this shows the common nature of time series once you will remove the trend and the seasonal component so what is the seasonal component so seasonal component is the component is the thing that comes seasonally like in february you are seeing some some jump in the your time series or in march you are seeing some jump in the time series so how to remove these type of seasonality from your time series so again same thing you need to do if your time series data is in months or every single month you have one data point and you know that february i am getting some jump so you need to subtract this february's data from the last february data so this is called so you need to just uh, subtract the 12th component of the time series from this component so if i'm say that 2018 february uh, data i'm going to subtract 2017 data from this data point and going to get the detrended time time series so in that this is called seasonal differencing and you can apply these seasonal differencing uh, once you know that at which season or uh, at which month these seasonality is present so now you are done with your removing with your seasonal and your trend component so once you have removed this this these are the first steps guys you need to follow uh, while starting your time series analysis so once you have removed these two things now you are remaining with a stationary time series also there are chances that still some seasonal component or some trend component you were not able to remove for testing this that you have removed or not removed these three two things you have two tests available uh, so the first test no note uh, named as augmented dq fuller test so guys i am not going to get into the depth of this test uh, if you want me to explain this uh, because that will make this video uh, very long if you want me to explain augmented decubular test and what are unit roots just type on the comments and subscribe to my channel so that uh, i will get to know that you are interested for me to make a video on top of decubular test so this decubular test will give you a p value okay and if that p value is giving a significant number it means you are failing to reject your null hypothesis so in those type of cases you need to again do the detrending you have already differenced your series so this is called first order differencing if you you need to check that dicky fuller test is uh, passing or not if it is failing over there then you need to again do the detrending you need to apply second order differencing what if what i mean from the second order differencing once you did the first order differencing you already got one series now on top of this you again subtract every pre previous term uh, from the given term for every so you can see on the background i am removing every single previous term from the first order difference series and this is called second order differencing you need to do this differencing until and unless your dicky fuller test passes 
there is another test known as kpss test that also you can apply on top of your time series to know if it is a stationary or not once you have stationarized your time series now you have to apply the models so which models i i should apply on top of that so you have some choices over here the first one is ar model the second one is ma models and third one is arima model so what is an ar model so the full form for ar model is auto regressive model so what i mean from the auto regressive models is like i can show you the in the equation yt plus 1 it means if i am going to predict tomorrow that is yt plus 1 on the background you can see and today is yt so this y is my target variable or the feature i am going to predict and it is a univariate time series so yt plus 1 it means tomorrow's value will be equal to beta multiplied by yt plus some error so you are you will have t plus 1 value and you will have this equation now you apply ordinary least square on top of this so once you will apply ordinary least square you will get the value of beta so this becomes a simple linear or simple line equations and you need to if you want to predict that uh, what will be my yt plus 1 you need to just multiply today's value by beta factor plus the error so once you will apply this formula you will be able to predict for future so you you can see that there is something different from the normal ols in normal ols we have equation y is equal to mx plus c that is a simple line equation but here this is that the, the time component we are getting so in this way you are going to train your model you may have like two second order ar models so this is the first order ar model now you may have second order ar model and the equation of that second order ar model will look like this so you will have yt plus yt minus 1 so now you will take into consideration two steps in past and predict your future then again on top of that you apply ordinary square and you will get the value of your coefficient and this equation will give you the future values so how to decide that which order ar i should use for my time series forecast so you can decide it based on your acf and pacf plots so acf plot and pacf plot are looking like this as you can see on the background if you are seeing that on your pacf plot you are seeing two spikes and then there is no spike but in the acf plot you are seeing a continuous downgraded type of trend it means you need to use ar second order model so the the number of spikes you will get in your pacf plot will give you the the order of ar for your time series forecast so if i am going to plot one acf and pacf plot of the time series on the background and you will see that i am seeing that to there at one spike so it means it is a ar one order model in the stats model library inside python you already have this arima and ar models so you can utilize these components over there these are the arguments you can provide in the function that how much ar value i can give now you have ma con component that is called as a moving average component so guys moving average component it looks from the name itself you are getting some error on top of that error you are going to fit your model the the equation of the ma model will be looking like this as you can see on the background here i am fitting on the errors of my first order so you will see that if i combine both ar and ma model i am going to get arima model so arima called so arima model is a combination of ar plus the integration it means how many times you are you are differencing your time series that we did in the past for stationarizing our time series and the ma component so for for deciding the ma component value you need to again see the pacf and acf plot now as we did for ar component in ma component we have to see the acf plot if you are getting two spikes in the acf and then uh, and if you are seeing a continuous type of plot in the pacf it means you need to use a ma model over there so this guys this is called as a moving average model so guys this once you are done with this you have already decided your ar component and ma component you can fit your time series on top of this 
and you will you can get the forecast how to do this type of programming in python so you, as you can see i have given a code on the background and first i'm checking that whether the series is stationary or not if it is non stationary i am creating i am making it stationary then after that i am fitting up a arima model on top of that by seeing the acf and pacf plots so this jupyter notebook is available on my github and i have given the link of my github in in the description or you can see the link for the on the screen also you can see the link for my github so this is jack coder you can just search out on google you it will you will get the link for my github there you can see all the steps involved in a simple time series analysis so this is the thing we discuss for a univariate so what happens in a multivariate analysis so guys as like same we are going to use the same ar component over there but in the equation we will have one more component as an xt as you can see in the equation so this is the equation which becomes for ar and the second one is the equation which becomes for the ma model combine these two you can utilize a multivariate type of time series where you have another features available or feature data available for a time range so in that way you can forecast for future so this is the way we do uh, a univariate and multivariate type of time series analysis so most of the people nowadays are not looking at acf and pacf plot we already have one pyramid arima library available both in r and python which automatically checks out your and ma component and uh, your differencing order and fits your time series if you will use this library you will see that there are multiple lines are getting printed once uh, you trigger this algo so what is happening inside that so it is actually checking the aic and bic values so aic and bic gives you the goodness of the fit value if you know that we are fitting up a ols uh, ordinary least square on top of this equation so if your fitness or your curve is fitting very good on the training data your aic value will be pretty low and you will change all your ar component like you will you will iterate on top of these ar and ma component and you will see that where i am getting the least value of both aic and bic so the ar component like i you i am seeing that i am getting the least value on ar2 and ma1 so this is my best model so i will be using a time series where my ar component will be 2 and ma component will be 1 and my integration order will be 1 or 0 so while you are iterating whatever is giving you least value of aic and bic so guys uh, sometimes for checking out if you have some experience uh, while dealing with time series interviewer ask you that which type of components you seems frequently get selected in uh, time series analysis so guys as from my experience I, what i have seen that you will not get both ar and ma component one or two at the same time either your time series aic value will get least in ar component and zero ma component so you won't have any ma component over there or it will be some ma component and zero ar component with mostly the integration factor or the order of differencing one now we have some machine learning algos available so i am also going to give uh, some time over there but most of the interviewer they are not so much interested with these models let's understand which all models in deep learning can be utilized for forecasting so guys lstm is the model which is used or which is used quite uh, heavily nowadays in industries uh, for time series so there is a specific uh, thing which, which makes lstm different from a regular neural network is that it has some memory associated with that and uh, i already told you that in time series analysis we need a time component so this time component is in the same way utilized in deep neural networks we are giving a memory name over there but actually it is just saving your previous values and trying to forecast for your future so uh, i'm going to create a complete new videos where i'm going to uh, explain you a code where i have used lstm model for forecasting of some stocks data hope you have liked today's session if you have any questions please do not forget to write in the comments and do not forget to subscribe my channel with that uh, i'll meet you in the next video bye bye take care